It's time for the Splash Live from Civic Center TV, featuring stories from and about people like you in the greater West Bloomfield area. Simulcast on cable, 89.3 Lakes FM, social media, and the web. Now live from Green Media Center on Walnut Lake Road, it's the Splash Live! Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm your host, Tyler Keith. Thank you for joining us across our four communities and beyond on CivicCenterTV.com. We got the whole team with us, not only myself here in studio, but also with us as always is Kevin McIntosh uh, joining us. Kevin, thanks for being with us on the program again today. Nice job yesterday kicking off the week with a strong start. Why, thank you, Tyler. I appreciate that. Good morning to you and happy Tuesday. Happy to be here. Yeah, beautiful Monday. Looks like it's going to be a mostly nice Tuesday with a little bit of rain sprinkled in here and there, but we can't win them all. But someone that is winning them all out in the field, out and about all throughout our four communities every single day, very visible is Jake Schaff with us on location. Jake, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Tyler. Really happy to be here. It is a very busy day. Cars are on their way to work. Everyone's Everyone's uh, off to start their day, and we're starting our day right here, and I can't wait to get started. Yeah, we're starting our day here on the Splash Live, as, as we do each and every morning across the greater West Bloomfield area. And, of course, you can always tune in throughout the day and find us on demand on civiccentertv.com. Kevin, more with you in just a moment. We'll get to Jake Schaff here to kick things off. One of the biggest stories in town of late has been the, the new crosswalk apparatus we're seeing over Jake at the Indian Trail crossing at Orchard Lake Road, these new Hawk systems that are being put in in order to increase safety at, the, at those intersections as people are walking down the West Bloomfield Trail. And Jake, if people aren't going into work as we're seeing cars pass you by all throughout this morning in greater West Bloomfield, they're probably out on the trail enjoying a, a nice and cool morning. Yes, spring is in the air. It's the change of the seasons. Hopefully, Michigan weather isn't going to strike again and we won't get another big snowstorm, but everyone's enjoying the nice change of weather. And it's also important to be safe out here, which is the purpose of these brand new, this brand new traffic system, the hot traffic system. And I am very excited to demonstrate here live just how it works. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting stuff. We had a chance to show some video from West Bloomfield Parks late last week after they announced that this was going to be put in and was going to be in operation. And Kevin had a chance yesterday to talk with Chris Fry from West Bloomfield Parks who oversaw the installation of this right on that border edge of West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, and Orchard Lake Village. And, and Jake, people love the West Bloomfield trails. You've been with us for a few weeks. You had a lot of communication with people out on the trails already so far and you know one thing we don't see at a lot of these different trail crossings are these sorts of systems that really do help to increase the safety not only for our walkers but for drivers as well absolutely traffic safety is very important and pedestrian safety is just as important and it's little systems like this that help make everything run so much smoother and again on wbparks.org as well as on their facebook page at WB Parks. There is a full demonstration video. It's audio only with some motion graphics. Really cool stuff from our friends at WB Parks. You can see that for even more information. But it's a very, very simple system. Very easy. I, I know of these. There's a couple out in western Oakland County nearby where I live. On the other side, on one of the connecting trails, the airline trail out in the Wixom and Novi area. And it's super easy to use, Jake, and really quite a straightforward process. Yes, very straightforward, very easy to understand. And like I said, I think it's going to make things a heck of a lot easier for travelers, whether you're walking to work or you're just enjoying a nice cooler day like this, like today. Yeah, regardless, if you're out on the West Bloomfield Trail, if you're crossing that major crossing point uh, in the West Bloomfield Trail system, that's the last, last place you're really going on this trail network in West Bloomfield as you're heading into the northeastern part of our community toward Kegel Harbor and Sylvan Lake. But it's super easy to use, even at a busy time like this. And this is the perfect time to be using a system like that. Don't take that risk. Use the new Hawk Crossing System. And again, that stand, Hawk stands for High Intelligence 
intensity activated crosswalk. It's a busy crosswalk, Jake, but it's really easy to cross over it safely now with that system there. Why don't we do a demonstration? I know you're, you're out for a little morning walk as you're ruminating, thoughts are going through your head, new stories to cover in the greater West Bloomfield area. Absolutely, always gotta keep moving. So the system is very easy to use. It starts with the simple push of a button and you see the, the yellow lights are flashing indicating that it's time for cars to slow down. Yellow lights turn solid and then it turns red and then you're just on the move. You walk across the street just like you normally would. You got the, got the walking sign right there and then you make it safely to the other side. Yeah, and as Jake said, those lights will turn flashing yellow to indicate that a stop is about to occur for the cars out on the trail. That light doesn't indicate that it's safe to move yet. It tells the cars, hey, get prepared to stop. Uh, you know, it, it, um, practice caution as you're approaching this crosswalk. People may begin walking through or uh, after they've hit that button before they see that walk sign. And then, uh, Jake, of course, you waited until that light turned solid red. We couldn't see it because, of course, we were walking alongside you when that happened. But once you crossed over and, and you crossed um, both ways quite easily before the end of that light, at the end there, you saw those yellow lights came back on once again. Yes, absolutely. Very easy to follow, very easy to understand. And let's just back this help lower the amount of traffic incidents and the amount of traffic accidents. And I absolutely think that these Walk system is going to do great things to the community. Yeah, that walk sign is still that walk sign is there for the walkers, the walk and the don't walk sign. It has a countdown with it, like most of our walk signs do nowadays anyway. And then those yellow and those red lights to indicate for drivers a a that a stoppage is about to occur. The red light for hey stop cross the crosswalk is active. People will be crossing the street. And then with the countdown coming to a close, those yellow lights come back on in order to indicate that you're about to be able to start moving again it's more of a a yield sign at that point you may cross through but be very careful because more pedestrians on foot and on bicycle may be coming through jake thank you excellent report out there absolutely thank you tyler appreciate it again you can find even more information on the new hawk crosswalk system high intensity activated crosswalk that's what hawk stands for newly installed at indian trail on, or on Orchard Lake Road. That's just before Orchard Lake St. Mary's. And as you're heading toward the new Roosevelt School and into Kego Harbor, across the street to the golf course there at Pine Lake Country Club, and then heading toward the heart of the lakes down to the other trailhead at Orchard Lake Road, where there is another Hawk crosswalk system there as well. Really cool stuff. And Kevin, you had a chance yesterday to talk to Chris Fry from West Bloomfield Parks about that. Kevin McIntosh back with us on the Splash Live. And it's a really important system for increasing safety on our walkways, but also for protecting our drivers. Because, look, I grew up in this town. I've walked down that trail a bunch of times. I've been at that trailhead, and there's really only a couple of so-called choke points, I would say, where the safety for walkers and drivers is kind of suspect on both sides, and everybody's got to be really careful. So this is a much-needed change. Chris Fry yesterday and just talking about it. Uh, the thing that I like about it is it's one of them is right along the, the trail and the light itself, the crosswalk signal, it's pedestrian oriented. So when you hit it, the light is flashing almost immediately for drivers and traffic to try to get them to stop, to give you that right away to pass rather than being on a time system. So I love that. Yeah, and, and it keeps traffic flowing. It doesn't have the stoppage take mm -hmm. forever. It's very quick. It is very much time toward getting walkers and other pedestrians like bikers uh, across the street as quickly as possible but safely and then continuing that traffic flow as these often do uh, end up being placed at major thoroughfares. We know at this time of day mm -hmm. in the morning as we're doing the splash live that Orchard Lake Road heading in both directions through the West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, Orchard Lake Road area and, and beyond, no matter where you're at, that is a busy thoroughfare 
this time of the day. Last night at West Bloomfield Town Hall, of course, the West Bloomfield Township Board meeting, one of their two for the month of March occurring. And there was a lot on the agenda. Luckily, we broadcasted it entirely mm. live for you on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. But a couple of really interesting things on the docket. We've been telling you for over a month now at this time, at this point, and it's tough to believe it's been a month since we began this discussion. The future of the recreation activity center, which hosts West Bloomfield Parks right next door at the town hall complex. They are looking to renovate that building very soon, but in order to do so, in order to fund renovating a building that's about 8,400 square feet presently into what will certainly uh, down the road if they uh, get this bond to pass through the voters, presumably in August would be when this would be up for vote, could go and be a 33,000 square foot facility that hosts a number of different programs, recreation activities, athletics, the Nature Room, West Bloomfield Parks Connect would have a permanent location, and of course the offices of West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation and their commission. Last night was one of the final steps before getting that ballot language on the August 6th ballot. It went before the West Bloomfield Township Board, uh, the, the ballot language from the West Bloomfield Parks Commission for the board's final discussion before approving it. And there's just one final step away. Attorney Alana Knox from West Bloomfield Township uh, uh, explained this second to last, this penultimate step before getting this on the ballot. Approximately a month ago, uh, the parks, you and the parks committee had a very wonderful joint meeting where you discussed the bond proposal and then the various projects that they plan uh, to do with this bond, including capital improvement uh, projects um, that are needed and wanted. So um, the decision before the board is twofold. First, to consider a writ written resolution um, that our office would prepare, so you would direct the township attorney to prepare a written resolution, a copenetic with the resolution passed by the Parks Committee. Um, and then just the second is a deadline notification to pay place proposals such as this bond proposal on the August 6, 2024 primary ballot is May 14, 2024. That West Bloomfield Township Attorney Alana Knox at last night's Township Board meeting. The board ultimately voted uh, unanimously six to zero, six of their seven board members attending last night's meeting with one out of town uh, in order to approve, uh, approve the attorney for the township to draft final ballot language that will come before the board presumably in two weeks at their March 18th meeting. That will also be broadcast live and be available on demand on Civic Center TV Dot com. From there, should it pass at that meeting, and so far there isn't any indication that it would not pass uh, quite swimmingly at that March 18th meeting. If that's the case, it then would go on the August 6th ballot uh, where the voters would decide whether or not to provide bond funding to improve the Recreation Activity Center in a massive renovation. Also on the docket at last night's board meeting was uh, items regarding food truck vendors in West Bloomfield Township. Earlier on, uh, recently, we, we spoke to the great Greek food trucks, Carrie Maybury on the program, who uh, her business, the first in West Bloomfield to be licensed as a food truck vendor, but many seeking some uh, additional restrictions to be lifted out of the ordinance, particularly financial burdens and additional fees for special events, including West Bloomfield Parks, who has food trucks be a feature of so many of their events, especially as we to head toward the warmer seasons. Kelly Heyer gave her thoughts at last night's meeting. Thank you for entertaining this change. We, you, for many of you are familiar with uh, events that we hold here on the campus in partnership with the library and township, our food truck Tuesdays. So we are needing to uh, get going on booking those. And this has been somewhat of a, a challenge explaining the new ordinance and ensuring that it's for everybody's safety and this is a good thing. Uh, so thank you for entertaining the feedback as well as our events at Marsh Bank Park, Drake Sporks Park, we have often have food trucks booked at those events. And again, this was becoming a challenge and we'd really like to bring back uh, the fan favorites to our events for the summer. The changing of the ordinance language also passing by a unanimous six to zero vote last night. Kevin, it's really uh, a good sign for our food truck vendors. Having talked to Carrie Mabry from the Great Greek Food Truck, she said this is going to open things up a bit. Now, of course, uh, mm -hmm. food truck vendors are still going to have to go through the licensing process, but a lot less fees right. in order for them to participate in some of the big events that get quite a great turnout in West Bloomfield and beyond. 
Yeah, man, that's good to hear it. So, like you said, they still have to go through the licensing fee. They have to get an inspection. Also, they have to have the the appropriate <clears throat> liability insurance as well. But it takes away a, a potential $500 burden, which will open things up for new mobile vendors. And we spoke to Kerry from Great Greek yesterday who talked, even as, as someone who owns or manages a mobile food vendor, uh, food truck, she is open to competition. She's open to more food trucks coming into the neighborhood. And we love during the spring and summer seeing multiple food trucks and getting a hot meal from a moving vehicle. Hey, you know, Kevin, you're going to want to be out here more often in the, in the office on Tuesdays mm -hmm. as we get into the warmer months. You heard Kelly Heyer talking about food truck Tuesdays, a nice easy walk right over to Town Hall Tuesday afternoons. Well, ironically enough, pretty shortly after we get done with this show. And so a great All opportunity right. to get some some excellent food on Food Truck Tuesdays. We often see them also at events such as the West Bloomfield Youth Assistance Food Truck Rally over the summer. It's become a huge event in Oakland mm. County in recent years. So, yes, there you go. Plenty more to be excited about <laughs> on that front going forward. If you want to see all the discussion on these items from last night's West Bloomfield Township Board meeting, it is available on demand as we speak on Civic Center TV. Com. You can also watch it replaying today at 1 o'clock p.m., as well as on Saturday and Sunday during our weekend meeting replay block beginning at 9 o'clock a.m., Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live all across our communities each and every day. We'll take a short break. On the other side, we've told you before about some scammers calling you up, telling you they're the police, and you're going to get arrested if you don't pay up. That is false, and we'll explain what to do if you get one of those phone calls coming up next on the Splash Live. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. What people are watching in West Bloomfield, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. When you have a gambling problem, you have a money problem. Don't let your gambling cause you financial hardship. If you or someone you love is struggling with gambling, we can help. Get free confidential counseling and win your life back. Learn more at michigan.gov slash problem gambling. Live, local, and social. It's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join our team as we highlight people and events that are making an impact in the greater West Bloomfield area. Catch us live Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to the splash, live. Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm your host, Tyler Keith. Thank you for joining us and for keeping up to date with us on our Facebook page at Civic Center TV 15 and on YouTube at Civic Center TV. Our numbers skyrocketing lately. We know you guys love the Splash Live and thank you for being with us each and every day for the latest news, information, and interesting stories across our four communities. And at this time, we're receiving reports from West Bloomfield's Police Department, and it's been shared also by the Orchard Lake Police Department for, uh, for, for uh, more widespread information on this throughout the community. People calling residents of our local area, claiming to be local police and trying to scam them out of their hard-earned 
money. We sent Jake Schaff out to the West Bloomfield Police Department headquarters to get more information on this ongoing scam and let you know what you need to do if you get one of these bogus phone calls. Jake Schaff with Civic Center TV here outside the West Bloomfield Police Department where a team of dedicated officers is committed to keeping their town safe, even if it's against somebody claiming to be one of their own. A recent report of a scam artist impersonating a West Bloomfield officer has been making waves, leaving citizens concerned and questioning who to turn to and who to ask for help. I spoke with Deputy Chief Dale Young for a comment on the situation and to find out just what to do in a situation like this should it happen again. So the West Bloomfield Police Department last week received less than seven phone calls regarding people identifying themselves as West Bloomfield police officers and demanding money over the phone. It is thankfully an uncommon uh, occurrence and something that's happened about uh, a year ago, something similar. And at that time, uh, we did the same thing where we put out a message on social media so people were aware of it. Unfortunately, we're not able to completely eradicate this. Uh, the people that are doing these scams will sometimes spoof their phone numbers to make it look like it's coming from a number that uh, is familiar to whatever person that they're calling. But what we do try to do is make sure the public is uh, educated and knows that it's okay to be skeptical. In fact, we encourage that. So when we get these uh, notifications from the public, when people make the police reports, you know, we have a number of people review them to see if there's uh, leads that we can track down uh, the suspects. With the, uh, the internet and their ability to use voice over IP uh, calling, uh, it is somewhat uh, difficult to figure out exactly where they're calling from. However, uh, there are times that we're able to identify them or at least get some leads that we follow up on until we can't anymore. How can people properly decipher if the phone call they're receiving is legitimate or not? Well, we always tell the community, number one, that we will never ask them for money over the phone, but that also if you're unsure of who you're speaking to, and if it's a police officer, same thing, is that you can hang up with them and call the non-emergency number for the police department. And that doesn't matter what jurisdiction that they're saying that they're from. So for the community to know, uh, our non-emergency phone number is 248-975-9200, and it's available day or night. Let's hope that this entire situation serves as a keen reminder for the citizens of West Bloomfield and beyond that it's always important to know exactly who you are speaking to on the phone and that it's always beneficial to ask for help if something doesn't seem right. For Civic Center TV, I'm Jake Schaff. Thanks for that report, Jake. More information can be found on the West Bloomfield Police Department's Facebook page at West Bloomfield PD, where they, as well as Orchard Lakes Police Department and others throughout our local area, also sharing a similar scam from the Oakland County Sheriff's Office, who reported and released uh, a, a statement earlier on this week about callers threatening local, res uh, local residents with arrest over presumably skipping their quote-unquote jury service. Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard in this statement you're seeing on your screen on civiccentertv.com on Monday saying, quote, don't believe it, and also, quote, just hang up, end quote. One local resident per the release said that the caller on the other side started getting quite aggressive with them and even provided a badge number and claimed they were a deputy, demanding payment either by gift card and or by Bitcoin uh, per this press release from the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. They want to uh, assure you, as do our other police departments, that law enforcement agencies will not call you regarding your jury duty issues or outstanding fines and the like, nor will any law enforcement agency, local, county, state, or federal, call demanding money from you, especially not in the form of Bitcoin or gift cards or even cash. So be vigilant. Always try to take a moment to take Take a quick beat, take a quick breath, take a step back and think, is this logically what would happen? If I'm at threat of possibly being arrested, if there's a warrant out for my arrest, is an officer going to call me or are they just going to come by, find where I'm at and arrest me? For more information on this ongoing scam from the Oakland County Sheriff's Office, so you can follow them on their Facebook page at OCSO Michigan or oakgov.com slash sheriff live local social it's the splash live on civic center tv and 89.3 lake
Mix FM. Those scam callers aren't really cops. On the other side, a real, live, local police officer will join us on the program. And hey, you could join their team and be a real police officer or another official in their department as well. Stay with us live, local, social. The Splash Live returns next on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. Find local municipal meetings at our program schedule on civiccentertv.com. Find when your meetings air live or when they're replaying on our Civic Center TV live stream. Find it all at civiccentertv.com and click schedule at the top of the screen. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. One scorching heat wave will leave me powerless to cool my insulin. When the storm rolls in, my time to find a pet-friendly evacuation center will have run out. <laughs> I'm relying on luck, but who knows if it'll be on my side. When it comes to disasters and emergencies, it's not a matter of if, but when. Take control. One, assess your needs. Two, make a plan. Three, engage your support network. Let's prepare so we all have a better story to tell. I'm an ex-drug dealer, and I'll be your sub today. Two milligrams of fentanyl can be lethal. A lethal dose is in here. Who gets it, I won't know. It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. The sad reality is fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. More kitchen now. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Find us on Instagram at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to the splash, live. Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back. I'm your host, Tyler Keith. Thank you for being with us. If you're looking for a new job, maybe you're looking to shift into a new career field, one of the best places to work in West Bloomfield Township and in the greater West Bloomfield area is with our local West Bloomfield Police Department. They've been out and about all throughout southeastern Michigan seeking new job seekers to join their rank and file at the West Bloomfield PD right next door. Joining us to talk about their hiring efforts is one of their newly minted lieutenants, Todd Metcalf, with us on the Spl Splash Live. Lieutenant Metcalf, thank you for being with us today, and congratulations on the promotion. Hey, good morning, Todd. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, glad to have you on as uh, the police department it has uh, recently been out to Washtenaw Community College to discuss career opportunities. We also know that you've been in a number of other uh, colleges and universities and community colleges all throughout Michigan and around the region. What is the police department looking for at this time in terms of potential new employees? Well, you know, we're always accepting applications. Um, so, you know, if you're interested, uh, obviously reach into Tom Hall, look in the website. Um, our qualifications are there. Um, right now we have 74 sworn officers. Uh, we're slated for 82 um, since I've been here, we've never really been fully staffed, obviously, with retirements and health concerns and stuff of that nature. Um, you know, but we try to get to the 82 mark as best we can. But um, right now we have, um, you know, dispatcher positions open. We have an excellent dispatch center that was just uh, re uh, uh, built. Uh, we just had a renovation completed. We're about 99.9% .9 done with that. And we have an excellent uh, public safety uh, program here with a very uh, reasonable hourly rate. And that is an excellent position to um, uh, to see if you want law enforcement. It's in charge of kid, uh, prisoners and non-suspect reports and stuff of that nature. So um, there's a lot of opportunities. We're always accepting applications by all means if you're interested. Um, the basic need right now is you need an associate's degree of some sort, whether it's a general education or a business law, but you need an associate's degree to be a police officer here. 
and, and as we see on the screen, uh, or we just, just saw up on the screen with you there, there's a number of different potential opportunities if you become an officer with the police department to get specialized training and move into a variety of different units uh, beyond and including patrol. And uh, that's, that's kind of unique to West Bloomfield and other neighboring police departments. They have so much variety of different opportunities that are available. Absolutely. I have been here for uh, 25 plus years. Um, you know, one of the benefits of being a West Bloomfield police officer, uh, first and foremost, is the community. I've been a very fortunate here. Um, the, the community has been outstanding. Uh, driving down the road, uh, people wave. Uh, you drive through subdivisions, they stop and talk to you. So that's one of the biggest benefits of our agency. And second, like you did mention, we have a lot of opportunity. Um, I always like to say that our agency is large enough where you get to explore different avenues of law um, on loan to them um, and different avenues. So you definitely can spread your wings in this line of work and um, try different avenues that, you know, would, would uh, you know, you're interested in. Um, we have a fully funded pension and um, still, so that's, that's really good. And um, the township supervisors and the officials, just graciously uh, increased our wages, and uh, so we're very comparable. And um, yeah, so I am a little biased. I have been here my whole career, so um, it's a great place to work. And and you mentioned the community support that you know the, the so much emphasis recently in, in, uh, in the past several years has been put on uh, police officers, police departments taking more of a community policing approach, getting out in the community, knowing the residents that they're serving, the areas that they're patrolling in. It's got to be beneficial to be learning the job, to be growing in the job in law enforcement when you're in a community like West Bloomfield that has such strong support and shows that support for their local police. Absolutely. Uh, we have been community policing oriented for since I have been here. Um, there's never, never been a lot of stress on, um, obviously we have to enforce the laws and, you know, traffic violations of, you know, and stuff of that nature. There's never been a lot of pressure on us to go out there and sit in spots and, 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 write a ton of violations. We are more oriented, uh, the chief of police wants us, our response time to be uh, very quick to calls of service and to the community. So um, that's that's where we're at right now. We've been there like that for a long time, so. More information can be found on their Facebook page at West Bloomfield PD, as well as on wbtownship.org slash jobs for more information on open positions with the West Bloomfield Police Department and, of course, to apply. Joining us on the program is Lieutenant Todd Metcalf from the West Bloomfield Police Department. As we mentioned earlier on, looking for a number of different uh, of different positions all throughout the department, not just officers, but dispatchers and, and office workers as well, who also play a really critical role. And, let, and especially those dispatchers, I want to talk about that because knowing from seeing some of the footage from a, a, a story we, we aired earlier on, looking through their communications department there, seeing some of the logos of many other law enforcement and public safety departments, our dispatchers aren't just benefiting our police. Are they benefiting our police? I'm sorry, repeat that question one more time. <laughs> oh, I, I was saying that uh, we were talking about the dispatchers and, and seeing uh, in, a, in some footage from over there, knowing uh, some, of the, some of what goes into their line of work. Being a dispatcher, which is a, p a potential job in the police department too that you had mentioned earlier on, it's, it's great because it's not just serving our police, but really serving the entirety of our public safety apparatus in our four communities. You know, I've always said, uh, and I oversee the dispatch center right now, and I, I've always said that uh, it is probably the hardest position, one of the hardest positions in law enforcement. You know, you have civilian employees in there that are answering tons of legal questions, and 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 people are calling at the worst time of their lives. Uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of um, um, crisis going on. So they are responsible for a lot of knowledge. So it's a very um, rewarding job. And um, like I said, we had just read the, the dispatch, and it's a beautiful center right now, a lot of high-tech updated equipment, and um, it's um, an excellent, excellent place to work in there. Uh, Lieutenant Metcalf, uh, also uh, I, I see in the notes here that there's been some changes and some policies too uh, for uh, protocols with, with particularly appearance on the job with uh, the police department recently becoming more open to, to beards and tattoos. And, and why is that important nowadays as you're trying to attract employees but also create a welcoming and friendly work environment? 
Well, absolutely. Any any job, any place of employment, including yours, you want to evolve with the times. Um, you know, beards and tattoos can provide us with a higher quality. Uh, you know, people for applying, we're going to pursue that. Um, you know, mustaches have always been allowed. So what's a little extra, little extra facial hair? You know. Um, when law enforcement first started uh, back in, gosh, 1800s, people wore beards back then. So, you know, beards are coming back, and um, we have no negative feedback on that. People enjoy them, and if the officers, you know, it makes them happier and healthier, you know, the, it serves the community better that way as well. As far as tattoos, you know, uh, we have policy in place for that. Um, no tattoos above the neck. Um, but other than that, you know, Everybody's got their own personal story. You know, we're human. If we can humanize ourselves more to show people, like, we have tattoos. I have one. Um, but, you know, they have meaning and they are sentimental. But um, they can't be hateful and they can't be offensive. So that's where our policy is in place. So, yeah, we do have beards and, and, and uh, tattoos and they can be visible to the public. All good stuff from the West Bloomfield Police Department. Hiring for police service aides and their detective bureau, their canine unit. Uh, undercover units, uh, uh, dispatchers, and so many other positions. More information can be found on their hiring efforts on their Facebook page, West Bloomfield PD, Lieutenant Metcalf. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. You as well. West Bloomfield PD uh, on Facebook is, is their handle. You can also find more information on open jobs and public safety in West Bloomfield on wbtownship.org slash jobs. Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On the other side, we have a really interesting fair coming up at the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. If you are a local author, you're going to want to stay tuned and hear more about that coming up next. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. What people are watching in Kego Harbor, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Live, local, and social. It's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join our team as we highlight people and events that are making an impact in the greater West Bloomfield area. Catch us live Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. One in four Michigan homes has high levels of radon, a naturally occurring radioactive gas known to cause lung cancer. It doesn't matter where you live or what type of home you have. You won't even know it's there unless you test. So don't wait. Testing is cheap and easy. And if there's a problem, it's simple to fix. Visit michigan.gov slash radon to learn more. We took action, will you? Good nutrition can help make sure you have enough iron, calcium, and vitamin C in your body, which can make it harder for lead to enter your bloodstream. Help protect your family from the harmful effects of lead. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to the splash, live. Live, local, social, it's The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm your host, Tyler Keith. Thank you for joining us. Also with us on the program today, as he has been all throughout the last few weeks, as he joins our team at Civic Center TV, is Kevin McIntosh. And Kevin, one thing you and I have in common is that we are creatives who have been turned into broadcasters in our career. And there's so many other great creatives all throughout our communities here in the greater West Bloomfield area and some big opportunities coming up for them right here close to home. Yes, yes, absolutely. We're hearing word of an upcoming author fair that'll be at the West Bloomfield Township Library. And joining us, we have the pleasure of speaking with community engagement librarian, Emily Tobin. How you doing? Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Kevin. How are you? 
doing just fine. Thank you so much for joining us, taking time out of your very, very busy schedule. We appreciate that first and foremost. We want to talk about this author fair. Although it does, uh, the event does take place in May, May 5th, if I'm not mistaken. Let's talk about the inspiration behind it. What inspired you all to uh, organize a author fair? An author so we have lots of people um, in the surrounding community that are authors. Um, they're, they're published authors um, and they, they can't necessarily um, get their book maybe in a bookstore or they're not eligible for it to be in the library collection because we do have um, collection development policies that we follow. Um, mm. But we want to kind of raise them up and give them a spotlight. Um, so it's a special day for them and they're able to showcase their book, showcase their talent and get in front of some um, new readers. That's good to hear. I had I had no idea about it. Being a consumer, uh, being someone who likes to read, an advocate for reading and things like that. I had no idea there were, you know, different, you know, and we would make the assumptions that there are different levels to getting your book featured in a bookstore in a library. But like you said, there are different obstacles that are out of your control. So you're going out of your way to actually do things to still help those local authors, authors, which is very important. In a digital age, though, Emily, um, we're talking about people who like to call themselves self-authors just because they'll put out a blog post, a uh, web post, or just create a long status. Why is it important for people to know about the art of traditional um, uh, writing for books and being an author? So these are people that have taken the time to actually publish a book. A lot of them, um, a lot of the applicants that we are getting are children's authors. Um, so they are, you know, it's a children's book with illustrations in it. And it's important for, you know, early learners to, to get that literacy and to read with a parent or a grandparent and to see those illustrations. So, you know, a blog post, a lot of these authors have, you know, social media and blog posts and some of the, the adult authors even have their book in ebook form, but you can't really get over um, holding a physical book in your hand in that that tradition. I agree, hundred percent. I used to work at a library when I went to Eastern Michigan, and they I worked in a department where they would kind of toss old books. And I would be like, no, I want these books now. I still have a big pile of books. Some of them I read, some of them I have it, but I'm an advocate for those physicals and those hard covers. But right now we're going through uh, an application or window right now for that author fair. Can you just talk about the application process and the qualifications to actually be selected? Yep. So we ask that you be um, just a, a Michigan resident to apply. We are giving some um, consideration, you know, higher consideration to people that live in West Bloomfield or our contract communities, which would be Kego, Sylvan, um, Orchard Lake. Um, it, it run the application process runs through the end of March. So you need to submit your application by March 31st, as we do only have um, 12 spots. Um, in our meeting room uh, for, for people to, you know, to be considered, but it's totally free. People can come and um, retail their book if they are selected. So March 31st is the deadline. You can find the application form on our website, which is wblib.org under the services tab. And you'll also see that um, it's been posted on our social media, so you can pick it up there. There's a QR code as well. Good, good. Emily Tobin, Community Engagement Librarian for the West Bloomfield Township Public Library, joining us here this morning. Emily, uh, another thing I want to inquire about is, I mean, just the the overall feel or, or outline for the event. Is it going to be authors sitting reading their books to other people or are they just going to sell their books? Uh, what What's the, the full aspect of the event? So we'd like to, so it's a three hour event. Um, so we'd like them to be able to engage with, you know, people as they're shopping, but I'd also like to give them like a five minute spotlight so that they're able to kind of like with a microphone kind of round robin and give a, a little pitch for their book. Mm, okay, okay, very, very interesting. Are there any other events that the library will be hosting or, or, or you know, participating in that encourages uh, future authors or even readers for, for March being reading month also? So we are coming up on the end of our winter reading right now. Um, so we have a winter reading finale actually this Saturday from 10 to 1. Um, it actually coincides with Mario Day since Mario Day is 310. We're just having our party a little bit earlier. So it will be on 39. So it's Mario Day is our theme for our winter reading. So we will have um, open gaming from 2 to 4 for older kids. 
Um, and then a Mario themed party from 10 to one. So we'll have Mario games, Mario crafts, um, a visit from Mario characters and a special screening of the Mario movie. I love that. When you first said Mario, I said, is she talking about Nintendo Mario that I yep. grew up on, that I love, that my son now loves? We might have to come up there and pay a visit. Okay, that sounds very exciting. One other thing before we get out of here, um, I see that there's also an event that you all are doing. I was very interested in this. Something with virtual reality, um, headsets. Um, can you just briefly speak on that, please? Yep, so the library owns um, four um, MetaQuest 2 uh, VR headsets. Um, we do a program maybe quarterly for adults um, that just kind of lets them explore the headsets. Most of our programs are geared towards, I'd say, middle schoolers. Um, Steve, our teen librarian, goes weekly to the middle school and takes those headsets over during lunchtime so that the kids can um, play with them. And then we do open gaming once a month on Saturday, where it's not just the VR headsets, but you know all kinds of video games, but the VR headsets are always there. Okay, okay. I, I know I just want to go off topic real quick in regards to that. I saw that on the Facebook. I said, wow, this is interesting. So thank you again, Emily uh, Tobin, for joining us, Community Engagement Librarian for the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. One more time, tell people how they can find out more information about the upcoming author fair. Um, so you can head up our website at wbliv.org or follow, follow us on social media. All right. Thank you so much again for your time, Emily. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Have a great day, Kevin. Absolutely. You too. We Thank have you. more coming up for you on the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. What people are watching in Sylvan Lake. Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I get around primarily by bicycle. That's how I get to work every day, except for when it's really rainy or snowing, then I take the bus. We take public transportation here to the senior center so that we, to volunteer. Usually just getting to and from classes at OCC or um, just for recreation, going out to shop at Somerset or explore downtowns like Royal Oak and Birmingham. Public transportation is about community. For more information, go to oakgov.com forward slash Oakland Transit. When you have a gambling problem, you have a money problem. Don't let your gambling cause you financial hardship. If you or someone you love is struggling with gambling, we can help. Get free confidential counseling and win your life back. Learn more at michigan.gov slash problem gambling. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now back to the splash live Live, local, social, it's The Splash live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm your host, Tyler Keefe. Thank you for being with us and joining us online on Civic Center TV. Com. In Kego Harbor, the big debate of late has been what to do with Roosevelt Elementary School. The original building, over 100 years old, is currently on a collision course to be demolished later on this year as the West Bloomfield School District moves toward a future with one fewer elementary school uh, due to consolidation. And part of the debate from the city of Kego Harbor's residents who are dedicated to saving this historic building in their community is that there are potential other uses such as housing or recreation for the building, but yet there are still fears looming about that building being sold, being, being perhaps resold and turned into a charter school. That's because of an existing state law, says Representative Noah Arbit, who has been looking recently into replacing that, re repealing that law in order to open our schools up to having more freedom in determining the fate of their buildings going forward uh, in relation to charter schools. Joining us on the program to discuss this and more is Representative Noah Arbit. Let's begin with the basics behind
behind a uh, House Bill 5025 and how that relates to this issue of grand importance to residents in Kegel Harbor. Yeah, well, you know, as Kegel Harbor State Representative, I've been really attuned to this issue because it's something that a lot of my constituents in Kegel talk to me about um, in terms of, you know, uh, saving uh, the Roosevelt School Building, which is such a gem, a historic gem uh, in the heart of uh, the city of Kegel. Um, and so when, you know, when we have been discussing with uh, the school district, you know, what what could be done and, you know, what the issues were sort of behind, um, you know, this decision on demolition, um, you know, num one thing kept coming up time and time again, which was Public Act 98 of 2017, uh, which is called the Educational Instruction Access Act. It was something that was passed by the Republicans uh, in 2017 and signed into law by former Governor Snyder. Um, and basically what it does is it ties uh, school district hands as well as local government's hands and basically um, pr uh, prohibits uh, them from uh, placing a deed restriction on a school property um, if that deed restriction is intended solely to prevent um, uh, a sale uh, to a charter or private or parochial school. Um, and this is something that has concerned uh, a lot of public schools. And, and the unintended consequences of this law, which was basically uh, enacted really to uh, as a boost to the charter school industry, um, but this was um, uh, really a negative consequence, was that school districts across the state, um, instead of selling these buildings, which could be redeveloped and used for housing, for you know, senior centers, for veteran centers, um, or a number of, uh, you know, uh, ways to meet, you know, the needs of t the community today. Um, they have just demolished these buildings. They've adopted widespread a policy called demo don't sell. Um, and that's because school districts, you know, need to protect themselves. And so um, if the sponsors of the original bill really thought that school districts wouldn't react to the state trying to tie their hands and basically, you know, uh, in many ways force them to try to sell to a competitor, um, then they were wrong. Um, and so, uh, you know, as uh, Kegel Harbor State Representative, once again, you know, I, I looked at this and said, well, um, if this is something that could get the school district to change its mind and get to, more com get, get to a more comfortable position with selling the building and, and redeveloping it uh, to a redeveloper who will, you know, redevelop it, and redevelop it into housing or, you know, a, t a community center or, or something, um, you know, we do have a housing crisis uh, in this state. Um, then, you know, I'm going to introduce this bill and I'm going to push it forward. And so yesterday we had our first hearing um, on, on House Bill 5025, which fully repeals the Educational Instruction Access Act. And the thing that's really important to remember is that this isn't just an issue in Kegel Harbor. It's an issue that we've seen, you know, from Benton Harbor to Lansing to Detroit to Oak Park to Waterford and Walled Lake. All across the state, this has been an issue. Um, and so uh, if, if Kegel Harbor is the canary in the coal mine, you know, um, I'm happy to be doing my part not only to represent my constituents in Kegel, um, but to really make this important policy change for the entire state. And, and it's important, too, because unfortunately in this scenario, given the circumstances, there are kind of two different sides to this issue when it comes to Roosevelt. On the one side, it's the Kiko Harbor residents who have a strong emotional connection and a familial connection to Roosevelt School. It's obviously an important part being really the centerpiece of that city from a, a, a buildings and landmarks standpoint. But then on the other side, you have the West Bloomfield School District who has to think about the entirety of these four communities and beyond that they serve and also maintain some sort of a competitive edge because competition can be helpful and, and it's necessary. We have several school districts that our local residents can choose from right here in Greater West Bloomfield. And so this gives options to the community. Not only were you, uh, were you able to speak about this issue in committee earlier on this week, you also had a chance to uh, do so while being in the presence of residents from Kego Harbor as well as representatives from the West Bloomfield School District. District. Yeah, and I think it's really important to say, like, you know, um, competition, you know, no one's afraid of competition. You know, I'll put the West District up against, you know, uh, any competitors. And we know that, you know, close to 40 percent of the West Bloomfield School District, uh, you know, people, uh, people's are school of choice. And so they're, they're choosing to come uh, to West Bloomfield School District. Um, uh, but yeah, um, I, invite, I invited uh, uh, Treasurer Carol Finkelstein as well as uh, Kirsten Sonneville Douglas uh, from the community to to testify in support of my legislation to really give the local uh, community perspective um, uh, for you know why uh, this bill is is really important. And you know we had a really really positive uh, hearing yesterday in committee. I I think it was I think the committee members are very positively disposed to reporting the bill favorably to the House floor. Um, and, I, and I very much hope that um, we will be able to pass the bill through the House and then uh, we'll do this again in the, in the state Senate, hopefully, um, and then get it to the governor's desk. You know, and I think, you know, making some progress on this, hopefully, 
um, you know, we'll, we'll give, uh, you know, residents of Eagle Harbor the, the ability to go to the school board and say, look, you know, look, look what your state representative has done. Look what we've, what we've been able to pass into law. Um, if you wait a year, um, you'll be able to have uh, the ability to put a deed restriction on the property and, and remove that as a consideration. You know, really, my, my impetus for introducing this legislation was based on listening not only to the concerns of, of the residents of Kego Harbor, but also to the leadership of the school district and saying, well, this is, this is you know, a really big barrier um, to keeping the school uh, standing and, and selling it and redeveloping it. Um, well, okay, you know, as state representative, you know, I'm here to, uh, you know, uh, provide some solutions. Um, and so uh, I want to remove that as a consideration. And, you know, in the process of this, you know, it's really started as a local matter, you know, in my district. Um, it, we've discovered just the really negative, pernicious policy implications that this bill um, has had um, for, for communities all across the state. And I don't want to see any community have to endure what, you know, my constituents in Kiko Harbor have had to endure. And it's like you said, Noah, it's an issue that not only faces our local school district here in West Bloomfield and, of course, the city of Kego Harbor and what has been an historical centerpiece of that community for over a century. It affects other communities across the entirety of the state. Before we let you go, anything else that we should know about the, the process and where we're at with uh, this potential change to the statute? Well, you know, after after uh, you know yesterday's committee hearing was really the the first uh, you know uh, important step of the legislative process, and you know after the committee votes uh, on the legislation, um, then we'll have to uh, schedule it for a floor uh, for a floor vote, um, and hopefully we'll we'll get um, uh, enough uh, votes to pass it through the House and then on to the Senate and then to the governor. Um, uh, but, you know, unfortunately, I don't anticipate this being a, a bipartisan issue. Um, it, it should be a bipartisan issue. Everyone, uh, Republicans, Democrats, should have uh, every interest in preserving historic buildings. And, and that's really what this legislation uh, is, is that it has resulted uh, in, uh, you know, the original law has resulted in the, this, the widespread demolition of these historic gems in communities. Um, and I think we should all have an interest uh, in, in seeing this bill, uh, this law repealed. Um, but, you know, uh, if, you know, to the extent that there are uh, people in our community or people outside of our community who are watching, you know, make sure you're contacting your state representative. If it's not me, obviously, I'm already in support of my own legislation, but uh, your state representative, your state senator, uh, making sure um, uh, that they're in support of this legislation, I think is, is really, really, really important. Like any other issue, so many layers to this. Noah, thank you for helping us unpack this issue a bit today. Thanks, Tyler. I appreciate it. Glad to have Noah Arbit with us, our local state representative from the uh, 20th District here in the Michigan House of Representatives, addressing what, what is a very important issue, not only for residents in Keigo Harbor, but for West Bloomfield School District as they con consider the future of Roosevelt Elementary School. Again, at this time, the committee process continues to move on, and we'll let you know when we do have indication that uh, th that uh, this repeal could potentially be going to the House for a vote. It'll be up in the Senate, or of course, to the governor, as, as Representative Arbit had discussed. Some other interesting stories out of Kegel Harbor. Saw this on a post on Facebook earlier on this week. Mark Goodsell on Facebook posted recently. He was in the checkout line at a local grocery store and saw a little taste of his hometown seated nearby Milford Spice Company uh, based out of Troy is selling a spice pack that he saw on display called Kego Harbor Kickin' Chicken. The, the listed description on their website uh, for this chicken was, quote, one of our best selling dry rubs for chicken or fish, pork, or beef, roasted veggies too. Just the right amount of heat without being too much. It's blended, a uh, hand blended from California, paprika, brown sugar, sugar, sea salt, red pepper flakes, yellow mustard, garlic powder, onion powder, and celery seed. A perfect balance to add as a dry rub. Great even on baby back ribs. Really interesting stuff uh, that we saw on Facebook, Kevin, as, as we see this spice pack. Not often you see Kegel Harbor uh, when, being recognized when you're putting together Michigan-themed products. No, that, that was very, very interesting. I love to see it. Local businesses, small businesses doing great things that, you know, the community can support. I love the saying that I saw at the top of there. It said, culinary bliss is just a meet away. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. 
I love it though. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, the first thing I thought about when I saw this yesterday was it's a 70 degree out day outside. I just got back from walking between our studio and West Bloomfield Town Hall and saw this. Mm -hmm, and the first thing mm -hmm. I thought was that's, that, that to me makes me think about walking down the street in Kego Harbor, smelling some home barbecues down smelling by the lake barbecue. after a day yeah. on Cass Lake. Looking forward to a lot of that coming up over the summer in the heart of the lakes. Uh, some also recognition is due over at West Bloomfield High School for their DECA program. Young students who are looking to advance uh, in, biz in, in business uh, recognized for the national level recognition from Michigan's DECA 6 district. That's the sixth largest chapter in the entire state of Michigan, Kevin. And uh, West Bloomfield High School happens to have the largest group of students participating in that from all across that local area. You know what? I, I love DECA and what they do. We had DECA uh, at Cast Tech when I was there. I knew nothing about it. Uh, I just know that they, the students used to operate and manage a store. But as I do research, DECA stands for Distributive Education Clubs of America. They provide programs to help high school students learn about management and other different skills that can help them in the future. So I all, all applause to them. I support it. Yeah, they have a great program over at West Bloomfield High School, an award-winning program that's also very well-traveled and led by Julie Zala and the team at West Bloomfield High School. More info on the DECA program in the West Bloomfield School District can be found on WBSD. Org. Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live each and every day throughout your work week. Civic Center TV, 89.3 Lakes FM. Our entire team was with us today for Jake Schaff, Kevin McIntosh. I'm Tyler Keeft. We'll see you very soon.